video is going to cover some summary statistics about numerical variables. I've highlighted a bunch of key words here that I'd like you to add to your course notes, and I'm going to go through these in this lecture video. But if you want a more solid reference for them, or you want a, you know, written words other than the examples I'm going to give here, see our Biostat book. And I recommend you just go immediately to the bottom of the PDF, to the index, and you look up whatever keyword it is that you're interested in, and it'll give you a hyperlink, you know, a clickable link to the page that defines the word you're looking for. So that's going to be the easiest way for you to go get uh, a reference for these keywords as we go. So we're going to start with measures of center, uh, the mean and the median. Then we're going to generalize the median a little bit in ways that you might not have seen before. And that's going to define for us the quantile or its synonym, percentile. Uh, R uses the word quantile. Your book, Biostat, uses the word percentile. It's a little annoying that there's two different words for it, kind of like the categorical factor thing. But I think once you get them both kind of in your head, it's just the same idea, so it shouldn't be a big issue at all. Then we're going to go to measures of spread, like how wide are your data. Uh, the interquartile range will directly follow from the definitions of quantile. And then the variance and standard deviation are a little bit tougher definitions, but I'm going to try to emphasize intuition on the variance and standard deviation instead of the strict definition itself, because you're not going to need the formula. R is going to be able to do all the calculations for us. So it's the intuition that we're really going to need on these. OK, so let's start with the mean. And really, uh, as far as like a definition is going to go, all we're going to need to do is add up all data and divide by however many data points there are. So I think you all have seen a definition like that for the mean before. Maybe you just heard something like that. If not, it's a quick little phrase you um, will probably have memorized in not too long. Add up all the data, divide by however many there are. So that one's OK. We'll move on to the median. Often we think of the median as the number in the middle. And we mean to say the number in the middle of the sorted data set. So first, sort your data, and then find the number in the middle. But there's actually a bit more general definition. So I'm going to encourage us to not completely get rid of that definition. So I'm going to strike it out instead of erasing it but instead replace it with um, the median is a number that puts roughly half of the data less than the number. And that's going to be a more general definition for us. That's going to quickly move us into the quantile and percentile definition. So those are some strict definitions, but I think it's going to be easiest for us if we give ourselves a simple example. So I'm just going to create a fake data set, one, two, three, four, and five. And we'll just go in order, uh, mean and then median. So for the mean, we will add up all the numbers and divide by however many there are. There's only five numbers, so it shouldn't be too hard to add. I like to do this kind of outside to the inside sort of thing. So I'm going to go 5 plus 1 is 6, 4 plus 2 is 6, 6 and 6 is 12, and 3 is 15. So 15 divided by 5 is going to be 3. And as you can see, which is why I don't like the definition for the number in the middle, is because the mean in this case is 3. It is the number in the middle, which is the same for the median in this case. Like we can just say, let's get rid of this one, because we recognize that the median is indeed the number in the middle, also 3. But we should think of the median as a number that puts roughly half the data less than that number. So indeed, 3 is putting the data 2 and 1 below it. So I'm going to encourage you to think of the median as the number 3. And I don't like to call them the same idea, 
both thinking of them both as the number in the middle, they both represent center somehow, but center can mean different things. For instance, what happens if we just change this number five to 10? How is that going to change the mean? So I'm gonna do the same thing. 10 plus one is 11, four and two is six. So 11 and six is 17 and three is 20. 20 divided by five is four. Notice that if I change the maximum value from five to 10, the mean is shifted up a little bit. Because we're adding all the numbers, if you change any of the numbers magnitude from five to 10, the mean is going to be shifted appropriately. But notice what happens to the median. The median actually stays the same because in order, the sorted list of data is one, two, three, four, 10. So in fact, three is the number that puts two and one below it. There is approximately 50% of the data below it. So the median stays the same, even if the magnitude of some of the values changes, so long as there's basically the same number of data and they keep the same order. If you really wanna practice with this idea, try changing the number one to, I don't know, negative 100, and then see how the mean and the median change. I think it'll be very interesting. The property they use to describe this is called robustness to outliers. So you can think of the median as being robust to a potential outlier, like the number 10. Notice that the mean was affected by that potential outlier, 10, but the median was not. And in fact, you could change this 10 to something like 100, and that four is gonna, I don't know, it's gonna go up for sure, but the median will stay the same. That is robust to the potential outlier. Okay, so I think that is the description for why I like to think of them as both measures of center, but I don't wanna say that they both describe the number in the middle because they are different kinds of measures of center. Okay, so let's go back to our original data set, five, and we'll move on to the quantile definition. We'll say we're done with the mean and median for now. So the quantile or the percentile, they are both the same word. I'm just gonna write down the definition for um, quantile. So we'll say the pth quantile is a number that puts roughly p times 100% of the data less than the number. So in fact, this is a generalization of the median in the sense that the P, and I'm gonna write subscript 0.5, so I'm trying to write like a, that 0.50, just it's like, a, like a subscript on the letter P, is also known as the median. The 50th percentile, which I'm gonna denote P subscript 0.50, is the same thing as the median. It is the number three that puts approximately 50% of the area less than it. Okay, okay, so that's the generalization of the median. But watch this. Let's get rid of this and give ourselves a new example. We can also have P subscript 0.25, the 25th quantile or 25th percentile, whichever word you really want to choose here, is equal to two. So this is the number that puts approximately 25% of the data below it. It's essentially the number halfway in between the minimum and the median. So you can think of it as like finding the number in between the minimum and the median. Indeed, that's two. So that is the number that puts approximately 25% of the area of the data below it. Okay, so here I'll leave for you all as a challenge and maybe somebody can put up on Piazza. What is 
the 75th percentile in this data set. It shouldn't be too bad. Okay, so that was our definition of quantile and percentile. I'm gonna leave, oh look, I have to give you the answer for this next definition. <laughs> I'm going to move on to the interquartile range. The interquartile range is the difference between the 75th percentile and the 25th percentile. So in this case, it is 4 minus 2 equals 2. The interquartile range is, in some sense, a measure of spread of the data. How wide are the data? Okay, so if our data set went from like 1, 2, 3, 20, 50, you can imagine the interquartile range would be bigger because our data set is wider. But in this case, our data set's kind of narrow, just between 1 and 5, and really we're just going to take the difference between the 75th percentile and the 25th percentile. Okay, I'm going to hold off on a further example of that until we can get to the standard deviation. So let's just move on for now. And we'll do the standard deviation. The standard deviation is a little bit tricky. I'm going to write it out as a definition, but if you want to get more words about it, like a general formula that I'm not going to make you memorize, then remember, go see Biostat, the textbook, look up on the back of the PDF the keyword standard deviation, click on the number that leads you to the page that defines uh, standard deviation more generally than we're going to do here. So I'm going to ask you to recall for this quick example that the mean is equal to 3 for this data set. So, the standard deviation has the following definition. We take the first number in the data set and you subtract off the mean and you square it. You square the difference. And then you add to that the second number in the data set, subtract off the mean, square the difference. And you're going to go through all the numbers in the data set where you add up the difference between the number, the mean, and then square it. Okay, then you're going to divide by one fewer than the number of data points in your data set. So in this case, there's five numbers, so we're going to divide by four. And then you take the square root of all of that. OK, so that's an obnoxious definition, and that's why I'm not going to make you memorize it. There is a function in R that will calculate this for us on any numerical variable we give to it. That's going to be really easy. But what I think is going to be helpful for us is how the standard deviation should intuitively be thought of. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up with two small data sets. One of them is going to be this identical data set. One, two, three, four, and five. But then I'm over here, I'm going to have negative 10, two, three, four, and Oh, it doesn't matter, 10. And then I'm going to say, here is how you should think of the standard deviation. So the standard deviation over here is some number that we just wrote down the definition for, but I didn't go through bothering to calculate it. But what you should ask yourself here is, if the standard deviation is comparing every observation to how far away it is from the mean, and then squaring that, which of these two data sets on the left or on the right is going to be wider? And I hope you said this one, because this is going to give the bigger standard deviation between these two data sets. And this is going to give a smaller standard deviation. Because with the numbers negative 10 and 10, we are in fact having more data further from the mean. The wider your data set is, the more data you have further from the mean, the larger your standard deviation is going to be. Now, what we should do is contrast that 
to the interquartile range. So I'd like you all to figure out which is bigger in this case, the interquartile range for the data set on the right or the interquartile range for the data set on the left. And I'm going to leave that for you all as an exercise. And then maybe you can, I don't know, post up on Piazza which you think is the right one. And then I will respond eventually because maybe there's going to be some discussion about that. Next, let's dive into R and see if we can come up with uh, how to do these calculations on a data frame within R such that we don't have to memorize the definitions, the formulas for these numbers. So I'm just going to use, oh, let's see, the data set chick weight because that has a good variable, a good numeric variable named weight. So let's just remember that you can access the variable weight by using the dollar sign operator immediately following the name of a data frame and then referencing the variable you want, weight, by name. So you can go data frame of interest, which contains some variable you want. And once you have that, you can calculate the mean or you can calculate the median. Or what else we got? You can calculate the quantile. So let's see, the 0 0.5 quantile is the same as the median. So you're going to get the same number out of that. But you could also get the 25th percentile or the 75th percentile. Or you could get really fancy and do the difference between the 75th and the 25th percentile. Or you could just remember that that is, in essence, the interquartile range. OK, and last one. There is a function in R named SD for standard deviation. And if you calculate that on a numeric variable of interest, and oh, watch out, and you spell weight appropriately, it will give you a number. Oh, good. <laughs> so I spelled, misspelled weight here, and so it didn't told us there was no answer from that because there's no variable where weight is misspelled in the data frame chick weight. And so here are your uh, formulas already built into R for you, ready to go.